Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dabbler's Den. This is Chris Cottrell, and I've got a slightly different video that, uh, or a slightly different topic that I want to talk about today. Uh, this really has nothing to do with the Carolina Bays. Um, however, it is a, a geologic point of interest that, uh, that I definitely wanted to point out. Um, this actually came from one of my viewers, uh, Alfred. Um, you may recall that uh, a few videos back, we, we investigated the difference between windblown parabolic dunes and tsunami chevrons from around the world. And we applied those to the areas of the Carolina Bays with some of these um, splash chevrons that we find in those areas. And I, I, I really don't want to call those tsunami chevrons uh, because they're more terrestrial land features now. Uh, but they that's why I've turned them splash chevrons. But uh, regardless, uh, Alfred pointed out that they, there are some of these sand chevrons um, some of these tsunami chevrons on the southeast coast of Texas here in the, in the United States, and I completely missed them. Uh, and so I want to go ahead and point these out. Um, I, I, I did some research. I didn't find anything about tsunamis in Texas in this area. Uh, so I definitely wanted to point them out, kind of throw it out there and, and see what bites on them. Um, I, I don't want to be too spe speculative about, you know, what caused them. Um, there's lots of different you know, phenomenons that can cause a tsunami, maybe an impact, uh, it could also be a landslide, especially in this area of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, but regardless, you know, there's, there's definitely some evidence of a tsunami happening there, uh, at some point in the past. And, uh, so I, I just want to kind of throw it out there and see what bites on it. Um, so, so let's take a look at them. Uh, we're going to scroll down here into South Texas, you know, very extreme South Texas. And, uh, you know, obvious, you know, here's Port, uh, Port Mansfield. Uh, I've never been to any of these locations. I'm hoping that uh, some, some of our viewers here are from Texas and may be able to uh, give us a little insight. But uh, definitely these sand features that we were pointing out during the last videos, we have these sand chevrons coming up. Uh, and it really extends quite, quite a bit of this coastline. Um, this whole area uh, really looks like it took the main impact of a tsunami. Um, and, and blast the sand way up here, uh, you know, and if I just break out my measuring tool, um, you know, go all the way to the coast, our current coastline, you know, that's 30 miles inland. Um, and that's just how far it pushed this sand up. Uh, we're going to look and investigate a little bit farther on how much I think the, the actual water got pushed in. But um, yeah, you could definitely see here that this whole entire coast was devastated at some point in history. Um, just judging by the, the features that we see here, I don't think it was that long ago. Uh, but, but I don't, I also, like I said, I researched it and I didn't come across any, you know, any data based on a, a timeline here. So, um, you know, could it be related to, the uh, the younger Dryas event, absolutely. Um, I, I but I don't want to be too speculative about that. Um, anyways, what I wanted to uh, what else I wanted to point out was that you know we have this strange discoloration all the way through here, and it does look like it got washed over by water. Um, got some very interesting land features all in this area, one directional uh, water flow it looks like, and. Um, you know, if we go all the way, I mean, you can actually follow the line uh, all the way up, um, you know, all the way up to here. Uh, and this is, I mean, this is incredible. Um, you know, if I, if I measure this out, you know, from here down to the coast in the direction of that water, uh, we're talking about 120 miles inland. And, uh, you know, that's, that's an insane amount. Um, and I even, uh, thanks to uh, Antonio Zamora, I have the, uh, the terrain feature on showing the, uh, the elevation levels, you know, and uh, down, if you look at the bottom of the screen there, you'll see, you know, we're talking about, you know, 850 feet of elevation um, in this area. And, and again, what I wanted to point out was, you know, if you scroll in to the, the edge of this area, um, you know, you can almost see the division line between, and to me, it looks like, um, you know, like salt. I, I don't know if this is salt or if it's uh, fine sand, um, but you could definitely see a division line uh, of water being washed in. And this was the, the terminal ending. This was the, the termination point uh, before going back. And, um, you know, you could see the evidence here. 
I, again, I, I don't, I'm not from this area. I don't know, you know, if you guys can, can give me any insight on this. Um, uh, but we definitely, like I said, it definitely looks like we, we have evidence of a tsunami that washed in, uh, you know, over 120 miles into Texas at some point. And, uh, so this is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, uh, again, I want to thank Alfred for pointing that out. I, I hadn't noticed it. Uh, and, uh, it's pretty incredible, pretty incredible. So, uh, if any of you have any any ideas or, or any insight on this, you know, let us know. This is um, uh, this is pretty pretty neat. Um, you know, you can't really argue with the geology here. So I'd like to know more about it. I'm sure you guys want to know more about it. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye.